Hello gamers, and today we're going to be talking about Lynx, the favorite land owl sibling, the one that eats weird stinky fish out in the cold, and probably the only one that actually does a good job working out in the campsite for a living. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about why you should be building her as a free-to-play player, and on top of this, we're going to be talking about everything you need to actually build her. This means light cones, relics, and everything like that. So gamers, let's go ahead and hop into what she actually does now. At the end of the video, we'll be talking about why you should be building her as a free-to-play play or a new player coming to the game. So let's hop right into her skill first. Her skill is going to be targeting one ally. This will also be proccing off her talent as well, which we'll be talking about in a second. This is going to be increasing the max HP of that ally and increasing the aggro on them if they're a destruction or a preservation unit. This is a pretty be decently sized heal. On top of this is increasing the max HP of that ally, which means that it's just going to make them tankier. So really good skill here. But like I said, it all plays into the talent. We'll get into that in a second. But first we need to talk about the ultimate move because the ultimate move is what I believe to be the strongest thing in her kit her ultimate move is going to be healing all allies but that's a given so the big thing here is that she removes one debuff from all allies this is also going to be proccing off survival response as well but like i said the big thing here is removing one debuff from all allies with this only having a 100 energy cost it's a really low ultimate to hit so if you have a lot of energy region on her kit this means you can hit this quite frequently this is the main thing she's good for just removing debuff from all allies on top of this keeping the team alive which is kind of played through in the talent here in the talent here guys this is going to be healing you at the start of each turn this is going to last for two turns and if this skill is used to heal a target this means they're going to be getting increased healing from this talent as well now depending on the eidolons this can actually prevent you from getting another buff but we'll talk about that in the eidolon section later on in the video but now that we know kind of what her kit does, she's a healer, so she heals you, obviously. And she also takes away having debuffs as well, right? Let's talk about all of the extra bonus stuff that she does. Hopping into the bonus abilities first. The first one she gets is going to be Exploration Techniques. Increases the chance to resist crowd control debuffs by 35%. This is going to be huge. This means she will get CC'd less often, meaning she'll have more uptime to actually heal you. And this also means that that Oh Shit button can be activated whenever you want. And you don't have to worry about her being frozen and stunlocked for you to activate that. Next one up is going to be advanced surveying. Basically, it gives her energy back for every time the enemy with survival response is hit, meaning if you use a skill on a tank or a destruction unit, uh, she'll be getting extra energy back, which helps go to her ultimate move. And then finally, survival in the extreme. This is going to be extending the duration of the continuous healing granted by the talent, so this just gives you more continuous healing. As far as the level order, I would definitely focus on leveling up the ultimate first, just because this does give you a lot of HP to the whole team, and this also is going to be dispelling a debuff as well. This is the thing you want to be active the most. Next, I would say the talent because the talent gives you continuous healing every turn. And then finally, I would say just do the skill. This is uh, how I would level them up. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about these relics now. Now, as far as the relics go, I do recommend the same set of relics for every single healer in the game, barring Locha. But before we hop into the relics, I do want to say one thing first. Focus on subs over sets. I will say this in the videos to come later on. And I've said this in the video in the past. Uh, focus on substats over sets. If you can't get some good substats on these characters, and the sets really don't matter too too much so just focus on getting your main and subsets first once you get those then you can farm and level up the other gear that you need but make sure you're focusing on the sub and main sets first now with that being said let's go ahead and hop into what her best relic sets are here first now I personally recommend the four piece speed set this is because it's going to be giving you a speed boost to the whole team whenever she uses her low cost ultimate meaning the team has a pretty consistent uptime on increased speed on top of this is giving her a speed boost as well from the two piece set so this is really Really good now if you don't have this you don't want to run this or maybe your healing's not enough you could run two piece speed and two piece with the passerby just to increase that outgoing healing just a little bit more but let's say you want to get extra tanky you want to you want her to do as much healing as possible and in that case you would run the two piece disciple with the two piece passerby uh, these are the three sets that i recommend running on any healer in the game except locha like i said before because he's based off of attack this is the order that i recommend any of them to be ran in now let's talk about these planner sets now because there are technically three options Options you could run here. You can run Ageless, which is going to give you a max HP bonus, and it's going to give you an attack boost to the whole team. You can run Keel, which gives you some more effect resistance, and it also gives a crit damage boost. So this means she's getting CC'd less, and then it gives your team a bit more damage as well. Then finally, you can run the new set Pekinee of the Dreams if you're running her with a quantum unit on the team. Uh, this is the only case I would recommend this. It gives her more energy regeneration, right? Which means getting that ultimate back up that much faster. 
and it gives a 10% damage buff to any other ally with the same type, meaning Quantum in this case. So these are the three sets that I recommend. Most of the time, Keel or Ageless is going to be used. You can pick your poison on which one you want to use there. It's just going to be depending on how you like running her. Do you like running her with more HP, or do you like running her with more effect resistance and more crit damage? Really going to be up to you at the end of the day. But with that being said, let me go ahead and show you my set now. I'm running a rainbow set. I have two speed. I have one of the follow-up set and one of the purity palace sets as well. So... Uh, yeah, really scuff set. I don't even have a, a full planner set here. The reason I chose this set is because I, I focus on the stats, right? I want to make sure she has over 135 speed or 134 speed, so that's why we're sitting at 142 speed right now. I want to make sure her HP is on point. She has at least 4300. It could go higher if I upgraded some more of these. But yes, this is the set I'm running right now because, uh, yeah, I don't really farm too much for my abundance type characters. They kind of just do the job already what I need to do. That's why she's level 75 as well. What's up, gamers? Future Editor YouTube here, and I forgot to mention um, any of the main stats or subsets that you want to be building on these characters, so we're going to talk about that now. Please subscribe, though, if you haven't already, if you've made it to this point in the video. I'd really appreciate that. Forgot to say that, too. So, yeah, as far as the main subsets go, on the boots, you want to be getting speed. On the body, you want to be going out going healing. On the rope, you want to get ERR, and on the orb, you want to be getting HP percentage there now as far as the substats go just really aim for anything defensive and that's gonna be things like HP percentage defense speed effect resistance really anything to make your healer survive more effect res is really important so you're actually not uh, taking debuff from the enemies I know the build has like really low effect res but I mean it works for me as of right now my characters don't die and I'm able to make it through MOC so I, I, I'm good right now but it might not be good for you so just keep that in mind well, with all of these relics out of the way now let's go ahead and hop into her Eidolons now now the Eidolons are super important because Eidolons give her a lot uh, most notably E2 E2 is probably going to be her best Eidolon because this will basically be allowing you to resist debuff application for one time if you use a skill meaning if you put this on your tank or you put this on your destruction unit they will be basically negating one debuff which is going to be super super good meaning if they were to get frozen or cc this would prevent that or just any dot damage in general or any defense down attack down, anything like that this would be preventing that but E1 is also going to be pretty strong as well because if an ally goes below 50% HP, it's going to be increasing Link's outgoing healing by 20%. This also affects continuous healing as well, so that means her talent will get a, a buff from this as well. E4 is going to be giving an attack buff based off of Link's max HP. It's really not that much of an attack buff, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, but it does give a little bit, and I guess that's nice to see, right? And then finally, E6 will be increasing the amount of max HP she gives from her skill. On top of this, it'll be giving increased effect resistance as well. So this this is super, super huge right here. But E2 is the best. That's the one I would be aiming for if I were a new or free-to-play player um, on this current banner right now, E2. Now, with the Eidolons out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about her best-in-slot light cones. Her best-in-slot light cone, obviously, is going to be one of the five-star light cones that we have in the game, either that being the Bailu five-star light cone or the new Night of Fright light cone from Hua Hua. Either of these two light cones will work great for her. I don't have either of those, so what I'm using right now is post-op conversation. The reason I'm using this is because it increases the energy regeneration rate by a certain percentage and increases the outgoing healing on the ultimate because that's the thing you're using most frequently. This is going to be really good. Big team heals on ultimate and plus you're going to be getting that ultimate back up that much quicker. I have mine at S5 right now, but you can use it at S1. This is what I recommend at the tip of the top of anything you want to run. Now, let's hop into some other light cone alternatives you could run. First of which being perfect timing. The reason I recommend perfect Perfect timing here is because it increases your effect resistance and it increases your outgoing healing based on the effect resistance. So this gives you increased healing and increased effect resistance, though it doesn't give you any extra energy back. So it, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Like it increases your healing. That's all that really matters there. And also if you're playing during this update, you can get the hay over here light cone, which is a free to play light cone. It's going to increase your max HP and increase outgoing healing after using skill. So this is also something else you could definitely work on her. If you're wanting like a more free to play light cone, you could run Cornucopia on her, which basically just increases outgoing healing. It's a three star light cone. Get it to S5. Level it up if you really are desperate for a light cone. But yeah, that's really it as far as building links goes. Uh, we I'm not going to show a showcase here because I think it's kind of hard to show a showcase with links. I just should put a lot of background footage of links. So yeah, take that for what you will. If you like the gameplay, then build her, I guess. But let's talk about why you should be building her as 
Where'd she go? Lynx? She was cooking a fish. Anyways, the reason you should be building Lynx is, first of all, she has a cleanse. Cleanse is going to be super, super important because a lot of the enemies now are just getting so much more debuffs that I think a cleanse is going to be essential. This is why I think she's better than Bailu. This is why she's better than Natasha. Even though Natasha does have a cleanse, she can only cleanse one at a time. Her being able to cleanse the whole team on her ultimate is just really good. This is a direct upgrade from Natasha. So I think you could build her with Natasha and have a great main healer. Even if you pull Bailu, I think she's a better healer than Bailu ultimately. Like, I think the only one that outclasses her is probably Hwahua or the two 5 stars we have in the game, the two limited 5 stars. She's going to be great for any free to play account. I think she's almost a must have on any free to play account as well. Even more than Silver Wolf, even more than just about any character, I think she's a must have and a must build if you're just starting off the game or if you're like a, a free to play account that's having trouble surviving already. I think she can offer great values to your account. She's a very valuable character, you could say. And then one final reason um, why you should be uh, building her or why you should be pulling for her anyways is the banner she's on right now is amazing. It's just like, they're cracked. You have Silver Wolf you can pick from or Argenti. And then you're getting Asta and Hanya as well. Like, I, I don't know where it goes wrong there. There's nothing wrong about that banner. So pull on that banner, get your links, build your links with this build guide here. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. I would really appreciate it. And in the days to come, there are going to be a lot of videos from me talking about basically how to build every character in the game. So if you enjoy the stuff like that, then subscribe to the channel. Anyways, gamers, that's going to do it for our little build guide on Lynx today. It's probably shorter than normal because she's a healer and doesn't really have that much to talk about. She's not like a DPS or anything that needs a flushed out analysis. But anyways, that's going to do it. I hope you guys enjoyed. Build your Lynx. Hope, hopefully your Lynx pops off for you and carries you through MOC. Anyways, that's going to do it for me. Check you later. Bye-bye.